I expect you're wondering where I am. Well, when they said, would I like to visit Camp Bastion, I thought, would I like to go and see a camp friend of uh, Carol Vorderman? I didn't realise they meant Camp Bastion here in Afghanistan. Well, as you can see, I'm surrounded by all these wonderful people who've made me feel very welcome indeed. The work of the counter-improvised explosive device task force is dangerous but vital. They seek out and destroy improvised bombs and landmines that might otherwise cause devastating loss of life. We're dealing with the IED, the savage uh, threat. They're absolutely everywhere and they're targeting both civilians and the military. And that, that is our job, we're here to clear it up. On the amount of uh, IEDs that they're laying, are you, are, you, are you winning the battle or is it sort of equal, even Stevens, as it were? If you were to look at the last few months, I would say yes, we've made a dent in the figures. Um, the IED numbers, for the moment, are down. They must have bloody nerves of steel, these young men, to do what they're doing. Yes, it does take a lot of courage. Fine! What is amazing is that they're so necessary because without them we'd be losing a lot more troops every day, presumably, yeah, if we the, didn't have them. Yeah, the Count Ride E Task Force are without a doubt lifesavers, whether it be, you know, our own troops or, you know, the local Afghans. Bloody marvellous, marvellous job. The unit is also looking to the future. Ready. They're training the Afghan army in clearing IEDs to make sure their country is a safer place. The threat from improvised bombs has grown considerably in the past 12 months. In response, the counter IED teams have doubled in number. Well, what's the point of going over the wall? If we just chose the obvious place, like going through the front door, mm -hmm. there could be booby traps there. So we've got oh. to avoid that. So we, we use the elements of surprise and pick somewhere where we actually want to go over the wall. They won't know where we're coming from. Right, I understand. And so the dog, <laughs> bless it, that's a very important member of the team as well, isn't it? Because that searches out these IEDs. So when they hoist them up over their shoulder like that, that's the dogs are obviously quite happy. It's just, uh, they just train them to do that, do they? But he's not protesting much. So uh, he, he's done this a few times in training. Do you feel that you are an extraordinary person? That you are extraordinary, you're different, you're braver than the next bloke? It's definitely dangerous, uh, we all know that. Um, but I don't think any one of us see us as any braver than the next guy. So we just see it as our job to do this. So that's what we do. Every one of these is a villain. <laughs> okay. Cool, but I'm getting into this thing. Now, where's that bloody producer? <laughs> well, he's not bad, is he? What, you spend your day like this, driving around the countryside? <laughs> to walk in the park. But what is the point of employing helicopters in, Steve? Right, in, the, in theatre we've got a, a high, high readiness force, which is a rapid response that gives us the capability to deploy a high threat IED team with its search assets and a search dog anywhere in theatre within minutes. Ah. Bloody show off. Counter IED teams use cutting edge technology and equipment to find and dispose of all suspect devices. This is a really interesting piece of kit. Now, it's obviously some sort of robot. What's it called? What is, what is it's, it? it's called the Dragon Runner. Yeah. Uh, we use it as um, a, a remote means of disposing of the devices on the on the ground. What it does, it's, it's got a, a little gripper on the front, yeah. of, the front of the, uh, the boom Which there. is holding what? Yeah, it's, it's got um, a donor charging, which basically is a, a, a big load of explosives which are placed to the Dragon Runner, delivers oh, it up to the, uh, the, the device in the ground, up to yeah. the main charge, yeah. puts it on as close to without touching. What it's doing really is keeping a man or the men at a safe distance from yeah. this device, yeah. every explosive device.
Nath, when you joined the Army, you didn't join to become an IED explosive expert, did you? No, no. Uh, my mum wanted me to join something not so dangerous, so she wouldn't let me join the infantry. So I joined uh, the engineers to get a trade out of it. Yeah. But then, uh, obviously, when I got my posting, it was to EOD, and that's one of the more dangerous jobs in theatre at the yeah. minute. So that turned out quite uh, different how my mum thought it would have been. It's been an absolute privilege uh, to lead uh, the soldiers that I have working for me. Uh, on a daily basis, I am absolutely, truly humbled um, by the dedication and the bravery that they show in the face of this savage uh, threat that we face out here, and of, and of which has taken its toll on us. I'm so very proud indeed. Their work requires the utmost skill, bravery, commitment and steadfast nerves. The prospect of serious injury and death are ever present. But if it weren't for the risks that these men and women take, the death toll would be so much higher. So the reason why I'm here halfway across the world in Afghanistan is to present this special recognition award to the CIED Task Force. So I'd like to call in the representatives, which is Ian and Nathan. Now, Ian and Nathan, I want you on behalf of the whole task team to accept this special recognition award from the Pride of Britain to recognise your bravery and your dedication and thank you very much on behalf of the whole country. We're very proud of you. Thank you very much. Um, wouldn't it be impossible without obviously our predecessors? Uh, we think it's actually outstanding that we uh, get recognised for this award. Bless you. Thanks a lot. So now back to you, Carol. <laughs>